Uh, Richie was one of the scholastics who came to work in our team uh, early on, around about 1995, 96, I think he was present in our team. Uh, and he loved to organise things like the coming backs of the students coming back to anti a Priya. But on the whole, he was just an ordinary scholastic like everybody else, you know, and, and it was a moment in history that... Um, that made his story different from those of the others. I have to admit that uh, after Rishi did, uh, it, it hurt me a lot in the way that many things that I think I can avoid not to happen, but I, I, I cannot think on that time, you know. Uh, for example, right after Rishi died, after we sent back his body to the Philippines, and I come down and met Kike on the stairway of the Bantipia house and I cry and I tell to Kike, you know, you know, I hold, I hold Salom hand and I feel like if I hold it that way, it will not explode, you know, but then they say, why I let go of that, you know, and then it, it kind of sad that it happened. Now, I'm sure that it's not, it not right to blame itself because that time it's just only less than five minutes, you know, the, all the things that happened. But it's just something that hit in our heart to, to remember the past, that thing we should do, and we did not do it. You know? um, Richie has been my very good friend. I, uh, we knew each other since 1988 in the pre-novitiate. We were imagining uh, how things will be, happen in the future. One thing is that we imagine that we will be committed to Cambodia all our life. We were imagining of our, of, our, of, of uh, as Saint Ignatius said, imagine the time when you die. And that's what we did. We imagined the cemetery and our names were there. Uh, I am imagining that if he had been here, he would been, have been a very happy companion. But now that he is gone, he has been my, uh, my patron. I think for me, it's, he, he's a memory of somebody who who was extremely kind to the students um, in, in, before he died. He was, he was known as somebody who looked after them in some of their, well, the problems that people with disability who've been child soldiers have. So he was very kind and very understanding and tried to do the practical thing that helped them. So that I remember, but also the fact that he's that his life was taken in the service of um, people on the margins would, <clears throat> would suggest to me um, that our mission here should always um, have a very special place for the people on the margins that it, and that this be operationalised. We just don't talk about it and put it as a core spirit, but we, we have it as, as our outreach to people, that people on the margins, people suffering after COVID now, 25 years later, um, people who are stateless, people who are migrants and refugees, people who are really poor, should be at the heart of our mission. I found Lishi is a very authentic person. I think he, his, his appearance, his word, his action is sincere of of who he is. You know. The form, the outlook is not important more than the authenticity of, of who you are, of who you believe in, or what you believe in, and what is your charism, what is your direction of life, that meaning. And for me, that telling, telling me a lot. And what Lishi words is more come back to tell me that to be authentic, to be true to yourself, I think uh, Richie's death it should be an encouragement for all of us to give our all and give our best for the Lord to work in this mission. I think his death should remind us of our offering. You know, that uh, uh, take Lord all my memory, my understanding and my will, all that I have and possess, they are yours, I give it to you. You know, I give it to you and just give me your love and I will do everything. It will be enough for me. 
and I will do all my, I can for the mission. I think that, that's, that's what his death should mean for all of us, especially after 25 years. It's for us to, be, to look back into our own vocation and be dedicated once more, especially to the local people, to the Cambodians who are here, to be dedicated to them. It's really not the death, it's the, it's the, the living memory and living love that's still here. So it's a bit like commemorating the resurrection of Richie, you know, it's a funny term to use, I suppose. But, but um, I don't think we need to commemorate the, the tragic death incident so much as, as what can inspire us all to, to work with love to build communities of love, um, to learn from the people here, and to to move forward in a in a in union um, with love as the driving force. With that incident, remind me of this, and then it's helped me to form my own my own way to understand the handicap or understand the poor people who we serve in Cambodia. I think it's more in that way of memory than to remember the incident, to remember Lishi personal uh, words, or, or but it's more like the life of him somehow uh, blend into my my leading my my way of the next mission. The anniversary should make us look back to to what Richie has done to remind us that there is a lot of treasure within us. I think uh, what we can do to remember Richie is to, is to be rooted in our own vocation. Especially all of us uh, desire to, to come to Cambodia to participate in the life here. And that is exactly what Richie did and what we are supposed to do. Uh, Sister Denise recalls that Richie ate rice with the students. And I think as we remember the anniversary, this is what we should do to eat rice with the local people, both physically and figuratively, maybe much more figuratively, is to eat rice with them, to join in the life of the people, to be also like Cambodians ourselves. So I'm, I'm holding here three books, three uh, compilations, and you will be surprised what this is, because these are the letters that Richie and myself uh, sent to each other. So all the letters are here. This started in 1989 when we began our novitiate, and it ended October 1996 when he died, October 13, and I received the last letter only two weeks after he died. I don't feel like stopping. I honestly feel inspire, inspired to face the problems and the people, the truth, though difficult and painful, like improving our current services for the handicap, the school, and the wheelchair included, evaluating our current programs and try out new avenues to serve the disabled, continually empowering the Khmer staff, continually entering into friendship with our poor disabled students. In other words, Totet, I know where my heart is. It is with Jesus Christ. Jesus who gave his all for the poor, the sick, the orphan, and others. I feel as if I'm beginning to understand more when I say I want to be like Christ. I will follow Jesus. I am Jesus' friend and companion. I am a Jesuit. I know where my heart is. These are the things and there are so many other parts of the letter that I, I could share. But you know, this, this letter, he said, please do not share this with others because this is my confession to you. So he said that in the last part of the letter. But it's so, it's so good. It's edifying that I think I should share it to other people because it helps to give life.